thought it was over. I thought my life as an athlete was over and that I was too old to try anything else. I ran New York, my best marathon, in two hours and 55 minutes. I did many triathlons and five Ironmans. I was the first person in the world to do twice the Triple Crown. And the Triple Crown is swimming around Manhattan, swimming from Catalina Island to Palos Verdes, around Long Beach, and the English Channel. And then I said, I'm done with swimming. And I will do my other goal, which was to go and climb Mount Everest and have a big accident. And I had to be on crutches for three months, I had to have somebody to help me go into the shower and all the rehabilitation. But I tell people that you have to have a rock. And it doesn't have to be sports like it is for me or swimming, but everybody needs a rock to hold on because life is full of surprises. One day I heard there was a new challenge, the Ocean Seven, which is swims that are similar to the Seven Summits. There are swims that you do all over the world. Swim the English Channel, the Catalina Channel, Gibraltar, which is between Spain and Morocco, and the Tsugaru Channel, between the two big islands in Japan, the Molokai Channel, in Hawaii, the Cook Strait, and finally the North Channel between Ireland and Scotland. When I decided to do Ocean 7, it was very important that I succeed in a very short period of time. I was going to be 58 when I finished. And when you talk to people who try to do Ocean 7, there are people who fail one or two or three times. I decided to get this team together. I have a coach. Her name is Nora Toledano. She's one of the few people in the world that has done the English Channel back and forth. But then I have a strength coach. And as you grow older, that becomes a very important factor. Ricardo Duron, he helps me with my technique in the water. When you swim for so many hours, you tend to forget the stroke. Muscle activation technique keeps my muscles all lined up so I have a good performance. I have a sports doctor and she is the one who helps me define my diet through the swims. And then I have my mental coach, because you can be a very good swimmer, but if you don't have the mind to overcome all the things that happen during a swim, you're not gonna get to the other side. The open water swimming and pool swimming are very much different. When you're swimming a pool, you have a lane, so you know where you're going and that you won't find in the ocean. When you start swimming in open water, you have to get oriented. And it can be by the lines in the horizon or having a boat or a kayak. I was a part of his training here when he was getting ready for cold water immersion. And I was part of that group of people who pilot him on Catalina. It builds a bond between the swimmer and the pilot. At some point, actually, you get to know the swimmer so well that you know which arm is in the water, even without looking, just by sound. The pools have certain temperature that is very comfortable for swimmers. And when you do open water, you can find temperatures very cold. And in the pool, you don't have the adventures that you have in open water swimming, and I like adventures. When you do open water swimming, you only have two things in front of you, wind and waves. That to me is very relaxing because here I only have to enjoy the ride and be calm, and that brings a lot of freedom. Oh, no. 
everybody asks me if I'm afraid of sharks. And um, I tell them that sharks and I have an understanding. I don't go and poke their eyes, and they probably see me, and they think if I eat that guy, I'll get indigestion. So uh, um, they'll get close to me. I've never had a shark encounter. The real enemies of an open water swimmer are the jellyfishes. And when I swam Molokai, between the island of Molokai and Oahu and Hawaii, and suddenly I was stung in my nose, right here. It was as if somebody had punched me. And I cried for about an hour. And I had to stop and get the tears out of my goggles. I'm from Mexico City. I lived uh, almost all my life in Mexico. Then I spent about 20 years in the Mexican government working at Ministry of Trade, Finance, and Education. And I am uh, the CEO and a partner in a system of seven high schools in Mexico City. I started swimming because they bullied me a lot when I was a little kid. People go and tell me I was a, a fatty, and chubby. One of my commitments as a citizen of Mexico has been to promote physical activity. I was 14 years old and my dad lost his job and I had to find money. And so I started selling Speedo swimsuit goggles and caps. We used to sell that from Mexico all the way in South America. And that was my first business. And that grew to be a very big business. Part of Stanford was paid with that. And my brothers went to school with that and one of them even bought a house. Bill and Shirley were my American parents. When he came to the Pan American Games, I asked him to get me a place to go and live for a summer. And he said, no, no, I've talked to Shirley about it, and, and we think you should come and live with us in the States, and that would be a way for a person like you, who would probably be somebody who would be influential in Mexico, to see how things are done in America, and that will help your family, your country, and eventually will help the United States, because we will probably have open borders and have a lot of trade. So I was like a fifth child, and they'll have my Lee brothers and my Lee family. And over time, what happened, which was really great, is I met his family. Eventually, his younger brother, Raul, came to live at our house, and I got to go to Mexico and visit his family and spend summers there and get to know all of his family. Estoy aquí en San Francisco con mi amiga Kimberly Chambers. Antonio is a Southie and Rolling Club member like myself, and recently he just swam the Cook Strait between the North and South Island of New Zealand. And he is one swim away from completing the Ocean 7 Challenge. Antonio and I gathered a group of swimming friends from around the world, Americans, Israelis, South Africans, Mexicans, I was the Kiwi. We wanted to highlight by swimming across the border from the US to Mexico, that water connects all of us. And how amazing it would be if the world could come to that agreement and understand that as humans, we are intricately connected. There's no us versus them. When I arrived in Ireland, I went to a little town called Donagadi, and I arrived three weeks before my window. So I was getting ready, and it was the last swim. And I had to swim from Ireland to Scotland. And the water was 13 degrees Celsius, which is somewhere around the lower 50s. And the wind and the weather wouldn't cooperate. So one of the rituals of open water swimming is that every afternoon you go and ask the captain, are we going out tomorrow? And it's very frustrating when the captain tells you, no, you won't be able to go tomorrow. And it's even more frustrating when the captain said, we won't be able to go tomorrow or in the next three days because it looks really bad. And there was only one day left. So I wake up at five o'clock. It looked windy and it was raining. At about quarter to seven, 
Quinton arrives and says, we can start. It's going to be rough the first three hours. And then it's going to, the wind is going to come down. I got to the middle at a very good pace. And as I was approaching the end, I was stung by two jellyfishes. And it hurt a lot. And I had gone through a crisis because I had to break the currents that were really going against me. Does this just say to him that he needs to go to otherwise the tide's not going to get him in? Okay. And I was tired. And then the water was very cold, it was getting dark. And as I was approaching the coast, I said, where will our land? Because there was no beach. And to finish a swim, you have to be able to have the water at least below your waist and be still and raise your arm. So I tried to do that and a wave came and I couldn't get myself in position. And I just looked and I see this big massive stones. In that moment, I was very scared. I put my head down and my chin and my, and my body and just tried to be a little bald. And suddenly I landed in a piece of rock that I could hold on and I raised my arm and my seven ocean was done and I had finished in 13 hours and 32 minutes. Now that I'm 58 and I did Ocean 7, I always tell people that dreams don't have age.